Nice, healthy fish. Thick. See how thick they are down the backs. That's a chunk there. They're pretty colored, huh? That must what be one of them. That must be one of them tiger bass. That's probably a tiger bass. I'm, I'm you can't looking tell at unless you get a. I was looking at stripes on them. Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we put some Florida bass and some F1 tiger bass in here for initial start to get the growth potential of the Florida bass. And, aggressive tendencies of the F1, which is a cross between a northern strain and a Florida strain. But it, something that uh, people, when they want to shock their lake, you yeah. know, obviously they they go out there and say, hey, you know, well, you didn't shock my big fish. You know, That's I want right. to see the biggest yeah. fish in there. You, you're you not going... It's a sampling tool, so what we're trying to get is a population as a whole. Sometimes we get a big one, sometimes we right. don't but we can weigh and measure all these fish and figure out the conditions of these bass is really what we're looking for. Not necessarily exactly. how big they are. Uh, of course, we want to know that too, and the customer usually wants to see yeah. that big fish, but um, even if we don't get one today, we know they're in here, the food's in here. So we're looking at the bluegill size structure. You know, we want to see a lot of those three to five inch brim right. for the bass to eat, uh, the shad population. And that's why all this fish structure is so important. It's holding all this bait fish. So it's all the forage fish gets a hiding place. Exactly, and we had a ton of shad. Ton of shad, and the bass have places yep. to ambush their prey from. So um, you may get hung up from time to time, but it's a, it's a good thing. Okay, you know, you've been here from the start, from the time we, we drained this lake. It was here already, but we redid all the structure, and you supervised that, and we started from scratch. But now, what about the guy that goes out and buys property and he's got a lake on his property? Yeah. He needs to call somebody like you or, I mean, what's the first step? Well, that's the best way. I mean, if, if the guy could go in and get initial consult, electrofish the lake, see what his fish population is doing. And during that initial consult, electrofish and evaluation, we check the water. We check for aquatic weeds to figure out where right. he needs to go. And that will give him a base to go forward exactly. what he needs to do. If not, he's just guessing at it. So, so it's cause you, on, on this lake you want, it's just like I do my food plots, you gotta have your pH right. That's right, so he's for, checking water quality and a lot of lakes around here are pretty acidic so they need to mm -hmm. be lined in order to start a good fertilization program. Right. Um, so without that, without that food chain, you're, you're not guessing. Have much. You're guessing. You're yeah. guessing. And yeah. uh, I see it time and time again. People don't harvest enough fish out of their lake. They don't take care of the water quality, right. and therefore the fish are going to suffer. So getting it shot would be the number one thing to do yeah, uh, in so. the fall and spring. That way he can get, get a good plan moving forward on what he needs to do. I got you. spring are great times to shot because the water starts cooling off and most yep. of your fish start moving back into shallow water. Our electro fishing boat doesn't go but about seven or eight feet mm -hmm. on good structure. So you really want them up to get a good representative sample of the fish population. You want them up in shallow water. You know, we, we hit on structure, you know, and obviously we have got it in this lake, you know. Uh, and you hit on something a while ago talking about the bass spending less energy chasing their food source. That's right. So hit, hit on that That's a little right. bit. So yeah. Most lakes, the only, a lot of the lacking ingredient in, in a good lake versus a great lake is good fish habitat and that's structure. So these bigger fish, um, once they get up to five pounds, they're gonna need to be on a piece of structure, hunkering down, feeding efficiently, not expending those calories if you want them to get to that trophy size. Most of the time they're out there, if there's lack in structure, they're going to be chasing all the time, burning a lot of calories and never gain that adequate weight that they need to. So 
having good fish structure. And this one was, I'd say, a little overkill, but a lot of this structure deteriorates over time. So that's why we put it in heavy when we reconstructed the lake. Um, so once it starts breaking down, you still are gonna have a lot of structure right. for a long period of time, um, you know, eight or nine years, and they'll probably have to start adding some periodically. I, I like structure at all different depths. From newly hatched fish, they have to have structure in shallow water to survive. I'm talking one, two inch bluegill, um, all, all the way out to 10 feet. You know, during the winter time, fish hold on structure, the brim move out. But if I had to say the magic number throughout the year would probably be about five, six feet of water is where a lot of brim and bass hang out majority of the year. You know, I know we introduced a couple of different strands of fish, so a little bit deeper. I know one's called a F1 and the Florida strand, so right. what's the, the F1 what's the difference? is the popular fish now. It's a cross between a Florida and a northern strain. And a northern strain is anything above the Florida line. And obviously Florida strain is a Florida bass. Um, so that, that strain has got the aggressive tendencies of a northern bass, easy to catch, and the growth potential of a Florida bass. That's why it's such a popular fish. Still grows big, but still has that high catch rate for anglers. And we also have been, we put a small percentage of Florida bass in this lake when we really, when we initially started over to carry that Florida gene on a little bit further. So we wanted that trophy potential on down the line you know, five, ten years uh, to really take over in this lake. You know, a lot of people just think, you know, bam, I got the fish out there, heck, we'll just go fish. But, yeah. I mean, it's really just like you trying to manage for your deer if you're planting food plots and you're protein feeding them. That's I right. mean, you got to, you got to, keep those food plots up, you got to check that pH, get that balance right, you're going to fertilize them, uh, and, you know, so yes. you're going to go out there and plant food plots, you're going to plant seed on an annual basis, and right. just like you add adding shad. It's just so. like managing for deer, managing for fish is, is a little bit of agriculture and a little bit of science, yeah. so they're kind of mixed together, which is cool and fun, and you mentioned earlier about carrying capacity, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. As those bass spawn, they will spawn every year that number gets higher and higher and higher. So we have to start thinning some fish out from time to time. We'd love to keep a lot of fish per acre in here, but you gotta make sure your forage is there to support it, just like your deer herd. Larry, man, I appreciate everything. Thank you, Roger. Good talking to Good you. Talking Good talking seeing to you. you. Yes, and, uh, sir. Appreciate all the information, man. Thanks for, thanks for having me and look forward to working with you guys in the future. Oh yeah, we'll keep doing it.